in January 2018. I did try this AOSP extended ROM and it was pretty much pathetic. I really didn't like the ROM. There was lags pretty much everywhere and I didn't really like it. But right now I am really excited to say that this ROM has been improved quite a lot and this is pretty much it. And I really do like it over Nitrogen OS. Well, why I am saying this? So, let me explain in today's video. Hey, what's happening guys? This is Tito from KDN Tech back with another video and let's make it happen. Day by day, Nitrogen OS's official development has been slowing down like this. And what a right time for a new ROM like this AOSP Extended 8.1. Well, what do we have here? AOSP means stock Android. Over that, you are getting Android P like animations and this amazing boot animation. Everything is working fine. Well, I will be talking about the bugs later on this video. So keep watching till the end. And what's my favorite feature? Well, double tap to sleep and it's working pretty well in this ROM. Double tap to sleep on the status bar, double tap to sleep on the lock screen, double tap to sleep on the home screen too is working super fine here and we have a modded pixel launcher in this ROM. Well, let me show you the customizations you can do in this launcher. This ROM has a different kind of modded pixel launcher by default and I gotta appreciate this when it's this fluid, super customizable like here are some examples. And it even shows notification numbers for each apps which is really really cool well now let me talk about the battery life yes the battery life is pretty good over here I am really happy to say that I got six hours of screen on time here are some stats for it and I didn't game I was using the phone lightly yes but I got six hours of screen on time and the phone is pretty much two years old so that's pretty much it the battery life is really good now let me talk about the performance well the performance is really really good i was using nitrogen os and i said there was performance really good but in this rom it's good as well it's pretty close to nitrogen os and the battery life is almost better than nitrogen os so what can you expect more i don't know scrolling over through generally why and stuff like that and the animations are pretty cool over here I mean, it's pretty much a daily driver. I mean, you will feel this, you have to try it out yourself. I am really serious about this, I am not joking. The performance over here is really really amazing. And yes, GC Mod 5 and stuff is working fine. Here are some examples for that. And Night Mode. Yes, Night Mode is working fine over here. And the LED notification light for notifications at charging. Both are working fine. Fingerprint sensor is working fine here. By the way, I have FPC fingerprint scanner and face unlock is working fine here too. Let me show you the display settings now. It has a separate color mode as well as black, dark and white with this extended color option which I am using. Ambient display is working fine here. And for accent color, you have these many color options. And of course, can't forget that double tap to sleep on everything like the status bar, home screen as well as lock screen. So that's pretty much working and we have double tap to wake too, as you can see. Man, if something impressed me right after Nitrogen OS, it would be pretty much this ROM. No audio effects app here, so you can pretty much install Dolby Atmos and stuff like that. Well, let me talk about gaming. I played PUBG, it was playing pretty smooth, no complaints over there. I didn't face any frame drops or stuff like that. It was playing better than me UI and I have to say from better than Nitrogen OS. And there was a little bit of heating, well it's Snapdragon 680 issue I guess. So conclusion about gaming performance, it's pretty great. There are some nifty little things like toggle animations which you can find in customizations. Well now let me show you the customizations in depth. All the customizations are inside these extensions. First we have status bar. Now we have status bar items. 
Here we have status bar icons like this AEX logo and others like headset, Vault DE and hotspot etc. Next we have clock and date customizations. You can customize time position, AM, PM, date position, style and each and everything. Next we have battery. From here you can change battery icon to circle, dotted circle and a hell lot more. I am using square by the way. And you can enable showing percentage near icon or inside icon or you can totally hide it. Next we have network traffic indicator. But I use internet speed meter app so that's why I am leaving it disabled. And we have carrier level option here. In MISC we have 4G icon, double tap to sleep and brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar option which does work fine. So now let me go back in notification panel we have quick settings. Here you have quick pull down, opacity control and option to change column and row numbers. Next we have quick toggle animation and it's awesome. Watch this. I really really like it. Note that it doesn't work always even when the animation is actually on from here so I hope it gets fixed with software updates in future. Next we have notifications. From here you can control heads up and some more stuff in notifications like ticker and all. Next we have navigation bar which is pretty much software buttons and if you set it to smart fling you can customize it like hell so that's that. So moving on to recents. Here we have this clear all button option and free RAM is shown over here on the top. So everything is there in this ROM. Next we have lock screen customizations. We have lock screen shortcuts. Phase auto unlock is working I tested it so no issues. And here are some things like clock date widget on the lock screen and charging info which does show up like this. Moving on to system, here we have general tweaks, here we have vibrate on connect call and stuff like that. Three finger gesture is here and we have lock screen animations over here, CRT and scale like reselection remix ROM. And moving on to animations, from here you can enable android p like animations which is pretty cool and you can customize the whole UI animations from here. Next we have weather, normal stuff so moving on to buttons. Firstly we have power button customizations and we have advanced reboot as you can see. And press and hold power button to toggle torch while the screen is locked is working fine here too as you can see. And you can customize hardware buttons as I did for the home button for google assistant and this menu button long press for screenshot as you can see. And next we have app options and system app remover. From here of course you can remove any system app. So now let me just show you the about section quickly. Running on android 8.1, April security patch, here is the stock kernel and the build date is of 27th April. And here are the end to end geekbench scores for you. And this ROM has a built in AEX wallpaper app which is pretty cool. Quite a lot of good collection there. So now it's time to talk about the bugs. Let me start here. Well pretty much every ROM has a USB keyboard as you guys know. This ROM has a USB keyboard too. So I don't feel safe using the USB keyboard and logging my Google accounts and stuff. So I usually install Gboard if the ROM is not very popular. 
Like right after I install the ROM, I install Gboard, I just sideload the 8.1 Gboard APK. But over here, it was not simply installing, I have no idea why. So I had to sideload the 4.4, I mean Android 4.4 plus ARM64 Gboard APK. I don't know why, but that did install and later I could update it. So I think it was a bug. So that's why I'm saying this to you guys. And I found a problem that this error occurs after each time you reboot the phone. So that's a small issue but everything works fine so I am not sure why exactly it does show up. If any of you knows this, please let me know in the comments down below. Well for the first time I installed my sim on it, I had to go into the settings of sim card and change the access point, I mean set the access point to GeoNet. And I had to set the SIM to default SMS. You know what I am saying, right? And I had to do this in order to get the VoLT working. There was no network. I don't know why. I tried to enter the SIM like a couple of times, but it didn't work. I had to do those things manually. So that's that. While taking a screenshot in three finger gesture, it scrolls. I don't know why, but that's an issue right there. I feel so. So while we are talking about screenshots, let me talk about this. If the phone is in do not disturb mode, if you take a screenshot, it makes that screen sound of taking a screenshot. But the good thing is you can go to the sound settings and you can manually disable like this. So after doing that, the sound doesn't appear. So it's not a problem if you disable all the sounds and native video calling is not working as of now. It's firmware bug, I don't know when it will be working, but it's not working over here too, so that's that. And while we are down there talking about the bugs, I guess this is the last one. Banking apps is simply not working. I did try Magisk and I tried Magisk Hide of course, and I selected Google Play, Google Services Framework and Google Taze in Magisk Hide, but it was not working, Taze was simply not working, it was saying the phone is rooted or something like that it shows so that's pretty much it that wraps up this video guys thank you so much for watching hit the big thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel right here if you love my work this has been tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll see you in the next one you guys have a great day bye bye now